Hey folks, it's Nate, and you guys just let me know when you get tired of me talking about this plasma cutter. I got one more video I want to record on this thing, and then I'm just going to go ahead and use it as normal. And then you can stop hearing about it. If anybody has any questions about it though, please feel free to ask me. I can either make a video or just answer you directly. So, let's get on with the show. As you folks know by now, I have a deal with Yes Welder. They did not give me this cutter though. I purchased this cutter. However, if you want to purchase anything from Yes Welder, you can do so on their website, yeswelder.com. If you use the code SWBFAB, you can get 10% off and I get a little bit of a kickback. So you help out the channel, you get yourself some affordable welding gear at an additional 10% off. Win for everybody, right? Now, I'm going to be completely frank. This is my second time working on this video because I had trouble getting this thing to cut yesterday when I started recording the video. I'm going to keep you guys up to date on what I think long term of this cutter. Like I said, I did purchase it. It was not a freebie. So if it does not work well, you better believe I'm going to contact Yes Welder. And I did. And they gave me some troubleshooting steps, which I went through. I accidentally cooked a multimeter while I was trying to do the test they asked me to do. <laughs> and it started working as I was troubleshooting. So... If it goes out again, you better believe I'm going to contact Yes Welder and continue to figure out the problem, but I just want to be completely straightforward with you guys and let you know that I have had an issue or two with this cutter. So far, the welder, which will be another upcoming video, uh, has been pretty good. I haven't used it a whole lot, but I'm going to, and I know some other folks that have used the same MIG welder that I got from Yes Welder. That's been a pretty good machine for them. The cutter line for Yes Welder was relatively new when I ordered this cutter. So it could be that there's just some quirks that have to be worked out. Maybe I have the first model, I don't know. But at any rate, if I hear anything from Yes Welder about improvements or whatever on their cutter, I will let you guys know. So let's get on with why I'm recording this video today. I finally have a 220 line wired up. You might remember in the initial videos that I've done on this cutter, they were all on 110 because I didn't have the right 220 line. The 220 line required by this and the the, uh, the MIG welder is a 50 amp 220 line. and Or we went 50 amp to be safe, I think 45 is the actual require. I have that wired up now, so I'm going to do a follow-up video on this and a follow-up video on the MIG welder now that I have it wired up on 220. So you can expect that probably in a week or so after you're seeing this one. What I'm going to do here is I've got some 3 16 steel sitting around from when I did the bumper. I'm going to fire up this cutter crank this dial up, and uh, we're going to do some cuts and see how this thing goes. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the frame here. I have a piece of steel right here that I was just testing on. Like I said, I was testing out the cutter. It's been working pretty darn well, but I want to show you guys that and not just tell you. So, let's go. Let's get this thing fired up. All right, folks. So, obviously, a cotton sweatshirt is not a good thing to plasma cut in. Neither of these sneakers, to be honest, but I'll just be careful. I gotta get some leather boots. Denim jacket probably isn't better, or probably isn't the best either, but it's what I've got. I'm gonna keep using it until I get a good welding jacket. If you guys want to see me uh, improve my PPE, feel free to support me on Patreon <laughs> or go buy some shirts and hats or something. All right, machine is on. I've got it set to 55, which is as high as it goes. This is 316 steel. You can see I've already poked it a few times, again, during my testing and troubleshooting. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to cut some shapes out here. My intention is to use this plasma cutter pretty heavily in my next project, which should be the JK bumper. And I'm going to have to cut up to quarter inch steel when I do that, because I intend to build the winch plate out of quarter inch. Um, and then the rest of the bumper is going to be thinner, like eighth inch stuff or something, something smaller. So, let's just see what I can do with this thing. All right, so, the machine, when it came, had this little guard on here, on the tip, which is meant to keep you at the proper distance from the workpiece. And I do like it in certain circumstances, and I don't like it in others. So at the moment, I have it off, because I want to try to get better at freehanding with this thing. And using this as a guide is really just kind of a cheater. So, you know. I feel like I'll be better suited 
to use this plasma cutter in weird situations if I don't depend on this. So I want to get used to using it without it. Now, the tip on this is not designed to be drug across the material from what I'm reading. So you need to keep, I think they recommend a two millimeter gap between the tip of this and your, the piece you're cutting. So you don't want to drag it, you want to have even be close. But of course it has to make contact enough that it can start an arc. So what I usually do is I start very close, sort of like a touch start TIG. I start by practically touching and get it started and then I start to cut. I found that on some materials that's not as necessary as it is on others. So, here we go. So I don't know how well you could see that, but I cut, that's an inch and a half or so, cut it relatively quickly, like butter, look at that. It's a relatively smooth cut too, so that worked pretty well. You know what, I'm going to reposition you guys so you can see what I'm doing a little better, Then we're going to cut some more. Okay, I'm going to try a couple more just kind of difficult, things that would be difficult to cut with an abrasive disc, right, because that's really my goal here. If I can cut things with an abrasive disc, you know, I'm okay with that. But the idea here is I want to be able to cut shapes and I want to be able to cut stuff that's difficult to get. Abrasive discs are really good at straight lines and angles. This should be good at things like circles and plunge cuts and holes and all kinds of stuff. So that's what we're going to try out here. Let's try to make a U shape here. As you can see, it cuts pretty well through the, this uh, 316 steel. The cuts sometimes come out a little bit angled, and that depends, I think, on how clean the tip, uh, the, the nozzle on the gun is, because it all depends on the airflow, right? If the airflow comes out and gets misdirected, then the cut is going to be misdirected. And I do find that the tip gets, gets kind of, it gets slag on it, right? And maybe that's me not holding it far enough away, uh, on things like plunge cuts, um, I can understand how the slag might get back onto the nozzle, so that's a thing you're going to want to watch out for. I'd imagine that's the case with most plasma cutters, though, because I think that would be a problem with any plasma cutter, but I could be wrong. So, uh, you can see I cut a circle here. That went pretty well. I cut this U-shape. Also went pretty well. Uh, hopefully you could tell that in some of these cuts I was moving faster than others, and it kept up pretty darn good. Only a few little spots where it missed the piece and I had to go back and retouch it. All the pieces are laying right here on the ground. So, it did, it does leave quite a bit of slag. You can see that on the back of what you've cut or on the back of the piece you're cutting. This is still pretty hot, so I don't want to mess with that too much. Uh, but you can get that off with a chipping hammer, right? So I don't know if I can do it on this piece. How about this guy? Basically take a good old chipping hammer. And it knocks right off. This is a little harder to get off, but it does. It comes off, right? And then you end up with, and, and this is me, right, being a little jagged here. Uh, you end up with a pretty nice cut. I have cut with a guide. I had a previous video 
where I was cutting that sheet metal up with this cutter, and it did pretty well with that. I used a, a basically a four foot level as a guide with some clamps, and that it cut really dang straight, right? So that was this is me, right? Me not using a guide, not taking my time. So, but again, this was just a demo to show you how well it can cut on 220. Up to 55 amps, this thing is set at on my new 220 line. It's not breaking a sweat. No pop breakers. The machine is working great. Again, I don't know what the problem I had with it was. I will update you guys if I continue to have trouble with it. For all I know, I had something connected wrong. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to do the usual fun thing. I'm going to try to write my name or something with the plasma cutter. And then I think we're done, folks. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned a bit about the plasma cutter. I'm going to stop doing review style videos on the plasma cutter. I'll give you guys a longer term update once I've had it for a while and I've used it quite a bit more to give you an idea of the longevity of it. But uh, this is going to be it. I'm just going to start using the cutter whenever I have a project and you'll see it here and there on the channel. So if you want to learn more, if you want to see it in action, please subscribe to the channel and um, you know, you'll get to see more of this cutter. Because every time I have a metalworking project, this is going to be my go-to for cutting. Because i got to admit, abrasive discs suck. Alright, so if you want to watch my artwork, feel free. Otherwise, guys, remember, get out there and wheel, and I'll catch you in the next video.